Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. And uh, we're going to get into Proverbs chapter 1 today. I'm going to jump right into it for time's sake. And we're going to verse 10, chapter 1, verse 10. We're going to talk about today money or integrity. Money or integrity. Money or integrity. This is what we're going to talk about today. You will be faced at some time in your life when you get to have to choose between uh, make we'll call making a quick buck or choosing the right thing even if it costs you uh, something uh, of, of worth. And everyone will be tested with that. There's no question God will always test his people with money. He'll always test you with your giving. He'll always test you. And, uh, and, and the scripture says if we cannot be trusted with unrighteous mammon, who will commit to us the true riches? And so the true riches are, is God's grace, God's favor, God's blessing, God's honor. And so God will always test you in finances, not only with your giving, but also in, how, in your business dealings. So I want to give this to you, and a, a, a particularly about taking advantage of people financially, uh, overcharging people. And I, don't, I don't know why I share this with, with Christians, especially the people that watch this. I doubt very seriously you're in that. You've ever been involved with that or you're involved with that at the present time. But uh, I'm going to just show you, when people say, oh, you can do that, you know, everybody does it. Everybody writes that off, and it's, no, the, the government will never check. No one will ever find out. Let's look at uh, chapter 1, verse 10, and talk and see what God has to say about uh, joining in with the status quo, because everybody does it, or holding fast to your integrity and watching to, uh, marching to the beat of a different drummer. My son, if, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. Just because they do it doesn't mean God will allow you to do it. If they say, come along with us, let us lie in wait for innocent blood, let us ambush some har harmless soul. Let me tell you what that means. Now, there's, there's a lot of meanings for it, but it's really talking about joining in with their business practices, all right, to take advantage of someone that is, that is ignorant or, or maybe a widow, maybe someone, a, a housewife, and then a, a single mom. Uh, you see it, I used to see it all the time in these uh, when these catch you shows, you know, when they would, they, these guys would, would charge, you know, four or five thousand dollars for something. Oh, when they take your car in and they say, oh, and you just need a simple old change. And they would say, you needed this, you need that. People do it all the time. So, oh, you need a new air conditioner when they could have fixed the old one. And you see it all the time. We see it. Oh, boy, I, I don't even want to get into today. But I've read that even doctors are given, uh, the doctors, hospitals, are, there's all kinds of incentives for them. Uh, for uh, all the vaccines, um, you know the hospitals get paid an exorbitant amount of money when someone comes in, they intubate them on a ventilator. Um, you know, I'm not want to start anything today, but there's a lot of money involved. And when people start choosing money over integrity or finances over honor, I mean, even people that just, you know, won't get you medical help because they want you out of the way um, maybe someone, you want to get an inheritance from someone so you're not really helping them feel better. You almost hope they do leave so you can get some cash from them. Anything, anything, anything like that, God sees it. And I'm going to tell you that, that, that when you join forces with the lack of integrity, particularly when it comes to finances, stealing, cheating on your income tax. So people make mistakes. You're going, to pay, you're going to pay fines on your income tax. If you make a mistake, you leave something out. That, that's not, the, God knows the motive of your heart, but when you steal and cheat, I, I know a man that uh, committed fraud on his income tax. And I mean of many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, and he got caught. And he's a born-again Christian, spoke in tongues, went to church and sat in long services and believed in the power of God and everything. And he went to jail. And he was a very, and he, and he basically ruined his, 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 his not his only finances, he lost his spouse, lost his children, and uh, spent time in prison and lost his job. Uh, he was a lawyer and he's been disbarred. Um, so there's there's consequences for these things like well everybody does it and you know get get involved in business with me some kind of business deal to get rich quick scheme now, I've never preached on this stuff but I want you to see what God what, particularly when you take advantage of other people's finances the Bible talks about people that enter into into silly women's houses and and take them captive they they take advantage of their finances. Uh, I was sitting and talking to uh, Tanya's uh, uh, mom's house one day here in Florida, and and all these businesses call these elderly people who can barely, you know, think for themselves. They need people to assist them, their kids to assist them, 
And, uh, and they're always trying to sell them something, take advantage of them, and, and take advantage of their finances and get them hooked on one, one place, get them hooked on several, you know, sell them several plots, burial plots. And, and only, I mean, how many burial plots do you need? You only got one body. So, so it, it's people that take advantage of people financially. And this is what they're talking about. Oh, you know, the devil says, oh, come along. No one will ever find out. Well, let me show you this. Verse 12, let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole like those who go down to the pit. We will, now, now watch who went down to the pit. Joseph, they threw him down in the pit. And they all got together. Glory to God. And I feel the glory of God, the anointing of God coming upon me. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. They all got together, betrayed him. They're insanely jealous of him. Joined forces, betrayed him. Did not walk in the integrity of their heart. Put him in a pit. And, and they wanted to kill him, but, so ha but by, the, by the sovereignty and the providence of God, God sent uh, some slave traders by, and they sold him into slavery, and then lied to their father, broke his heart. They joined together, even when but Peter said, glory to God, whew, I feel the presence of God on me. When Peter said to uh, Ananias Sapphira, he says, why, ha goes, why have you conspired together? Why have you come together and worked a, a work together against the Holy Ghost? Why have you lied to the Holy Ghost and conspired together? And this is what this is. It. This is what, what Joseph's brothers. People get together, conspire together. God said, "Don't join that crowd. Don't you hang out with people that sabotage people. Don't you hang out with people who betray people, good people. Don't you don't you hang out with them? Bible says bad company corrupts good manners and good morals." Stay away from the, the God, they may be born again, but they have a wicked heart. And just because they're born again doesn't mean they're not sowing seeds of this court among the brethren, betraying people and taking advantage of people, even financially. Now look at this, verse 13. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Cast lots with us, we will, we will share all the loot. We'll share in it. In other words, come on now, it, we'll take advantage of, of the innocent, we'll take advantage of you. God even says this, because do not remove the ancient landmarks. He says, because I plead for the orphan and the widow. God takes care of the widow and the orphan, and God says, I will take up their cause. I will plead their cause. We've seen those old, old westerns where, where the, uh, the, the, the banker would come and take the widow's house or her husband, the farmer would die and they take the widow's house and out, out, out from underneath her and just take advantage of her because it, we could. We've seen, I've seen a lot of movies like that and there's stuff based on real life and people that got their things taken away from them because people preyed upon the weak, the innocent, the ignorant and, and the lonely and the isolated. And God says, don't you be part of that. If you work for an organization that takes advantage of people, get out of that organization. Pray for God to open an, an effectual door for you. Don't be complicit with that. That means that also you working for somebody when you know there's wickedness, you know they're evil, and, you, and they make their, their lack of conviction begins to challenge your convictions. And I can get into some specifics here, even about in our nation, and joining roots, uh, join, joining uh, uh, forces with people with, that are pushing people out of jobs, and I, I, I'm not even going to get into it. It's only get myself in trouble. But you know what I'm talking about. When you start choosing money over honor, and you choose money over integrity, and you choose money over over authenticity and and good ethics, then you have failed God's money test. You failed God's loyalty test. There's loyalty test. There's money test, and there's integrity test. And you can guarantee that every one of us will either have been confronted with those tests or we will be. All right? Then he says this, My son, do not go along with them. Do not set your foot on their paths. For their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net where every man can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. Dear Lord, glory be to God. My goodness. Taking advantage, trying to sell something to somebody who doesn't need it. I knew of another person that did this to older people. They, his father was a very famous pastor, 
and he, it was many years ago, maybe 30 years ago, and he went to the elders, of, the elderly of the church and began to sell them all kinds of things that they did not need, lots or something, housing or something, something that they bought into that ended up being a, 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 a it was fraudulent. And he had to go to federal penitentiary. And they just thought, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, my, my father's a pastor. He's very, very, you know, affluent, uh, influence, and had a lot of influence in the in the kingdom of God, and did. But there's, but, but that man had to go spend time in the federal penitentiary for taking advantage of God's people, ill-gotten gain. It doesn't matter if you're born again, speak in tongues, ill-gotten gain, where you did it on purpose and took advantage of people fraudulently. You did it on purpose. You didn't do it. You didn't do it because you made a mistake. God understands that, and, and you can clear those matters up. But when you start doing things like that, you take advantage. I love glory to God. I love when when Elisha uh, and Gehazi, his servant, when he went down. You understand that Elisha had double the anointing that Elijah had, and and this this man comes up to Elisha and begins to talk to him and. and and, and, and try to give him things and favors, and, and, uh, and Elisha wouldn't take it. So the man finally leaves, and Gehazi, Elisha's, his, his right-hand man, goes down to find this guy that was offering Elisha all these things and says, Oh, my master has changed his mind, he, and, and he, de he desires and requires these things. And the guy gladly gave it to him. So Gehazi goes home. And to Elisha, and Elisha said, "Did he asked him where you been? What have you been doing?" And and he basically lied about it. And and Elisha goes, "Did not my did not my soul did not my heart go with you?" In other words, I wasn't there in person, but the Spirit of God showed me what you were doing. And that man was cursed. Let me tell you something. Elisha got a double portion of what Elijah got. Gehazi could have got a double portion of what Elisha got, which would have been four times the amount that that uh, Elijah had. Yet he sold his his sold his opportunity, his future for something. Just like Esau sold out his birthright for a bowl of porridge, he sold out the, the opportunity to potentially have four times the anointing than Elijah did, and twice the uh, anointing that Elisha. But he chose the quick dollar, the quick fix, and took, and took advantage of someone who was innocent that was offering it to Elisha anyway. And it cost him greatly. If he could have done it all over again, I know he wouldn't have done it the same way the second time. These things are written for our, our example that we not be like them. What else can we talk about? Elijah, uh, Ananias and fire. Did you sell the land for this amount? Oh, yes, we did. Did you notice how good God was? He gave him the opportunity to, he just didn't kill him. He gave him the opportunity to come clean. They wouldn't come clean. Judgment fell upon him. Then the wife comes in and, and they started all over with the questions. Did you know this? And she goes, no, we didn't know it. And she did know it. And they lied. Even when God gave them the opportunity to come clean, and God would not have judged them that way, and she lied. He goes, behold the feet of them that carried out your husband. They're going to carry you out. She dropped dead immediately and carried her out. The Bible says the fear of God spread throughout the entire church because they were taking advantage. They, they made a, 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 a vow for, to give fi, fi, this, this amount of finances. They're the ones that made the vow. And they didn't come, And then they, not only they didn't give it, they, that they lied about it when they were confronted. And God gave both of them the opportunity. You see, ill-gotten gain. What did it cost them? It cost them their life. What did it cost Gehazi? It cost him a ministry. What did it, what, what, what did it cost uh, those that, that Esau? It cost him a kingdom. And so, I mean, you, you sell out for something over, and, 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 and the worst of all, we'll spend a few minutes here, Judas Iscariot, casting out devils, healing the sick, probably raising the dead, and for 30 pieces of silver, he, for ill-gotten gain, for 30 pieces of silver, he betrays the son of the living God face to face and lied about it and betrayed him with, with a kiss. Jesus said, now, here's the deal. Jesus said it would have been better for him if he had never been born. Do you think, you think he's in heaven? The Bible says it would be better if he had never been born. <laughs> he had the opportunity not only what did he give up, he gave up a throne around the throne of God. Around the throne of God, there's 24 elders. Chances are they're the 12 apostles. 
and the, and the 12 patriarchs of the Old Testament. That's, that's, that's a pretty strong bet, all right? I'm not betting, but a pretty strong uh, uh, theory, philosophy, theory. And he, he had one of those thrones. He sold his eternity and a throne around the throne of God for 30 pieces of silver. You know what he did with 30 pieces of silver? He went back and, he went back and gave it back to him. But that was, and, and, and the Bible says he repented, but he didn't repent like Peter repented. He was sorry that he did it. And he went out and hung himself. I'm going to ask you the question. Is ill-gotten gain worth it? I think we've just answered that question today. Even if you don't have the money to pay your bills and the money, don't take advantage of anyone. Give people a fair, uh, uh, if you tell them you're going to pay them something, do it. And you now what else can we say about this? Don't overcharge. If, doing, if you're going to do anything, undercharge them. Don't overcharge. Don't take advantage of people because they don't understand systems. And, and you go, oh, I, can, I can sell them things they don't need. Don't do it. It's ill-gotten gain. Just because people go, well, look, no one will find out, and we're going, we'll get rich doing this. It's not worth it to you because God has something bigger for you than that ill-gotten gain with a, terrible, a hard heart and a, and a seared conscience. God's got, when a, when a man's ways please the Lord, God will cause blessing to come your way. The Bible says the faithful shall abound in blessings. The faithful, those that he can count on, shall abound with blessings. Amen? I hope that ministers to you today. I don't think anybody was planning on doing anything illicit or, or illegal, but uh, stay away from those get-rich-quick schemes and everybody who wants to take advantage of somebody. Don't associate yourself with people like that, <clears throat> especially in business deals, because you don't want to be an accomplice to things and have that on your conscience, and you want God to be able to bless you. All right? Love you. See you tomorrow, I guess. God bless you.